Hello friends, you're with a lonesome gamer and I'm playing Italia. We're still on the first turn and uh, the Celts, the Etruscans and the, Creek, the Greeks have done their turns. The, Greeks, uh, the Celts did their major invasion and they managed to capture a big part of northern Italy. The Etruscans kind of solidified their position here in central Italy, although they lost some in the north. And the Greeks, they managed to capture Lilobeum in Sicily. And uh, yeah, gonna see who's next. And we see here after the Greeks, number five, the Samnites. Mm, so, what are these guys interested in? Let's check this out first. There we are. Okay, they want Neapolis, Samnium, Calabria, and Apulia, which is pretty much these three that they already control and that one down here. Brutium and Lucania, these two here from the Greeks and a victory point for each other area. So basically they might consider simply hmm. And I think, yeah, they gain also victory points for pillaging or raiding cities. Hmm. Okay. So I guess they might want to try to pillage these two Roman cities. It's not this or to raid them. Uh, the, the two Greek cities here. To raid Rome is a pretty dangerous thing, so I guess they don't want to risk that because they don't want to lose too many units here. Okay, let's see. Um, first they get income. One, two, three, four, five bucks <clears throat> because they control five areas. And I think they're simply going to buy one unit, so they are left with one. And, hmm, I guess they're gonna place it simply here. Okay, fine. Well then, Hmm. Hmm. So they're actually not so much interested in these two areas here. So they might consider maybe taking Calabria. It's risky without a leader because of the city, but still it's a, uh, it might be an option. Hmm. Okay, now actually I'm really thinking about leaving these two areas to, for example, the Romans for now. Maybe we can uh, coming to an agreement is unlikely with the red player if on the other hand we start attacking the Greeks down here. Still I think that makes sense. Um, 
So what I want to do is I'm going to move two in here, two more in here. That's exactly all I can do with four units. I can attack there and then I will move these two guys over here. And in addition, I'm going to do a raid here in Lucania. Now let's do first the attack here at Calabria. And because there's a city, the attacker has a minus two modifier. So to kill the Greeks, they would need a nine. I can roll four dice. And they don't have a nine. So it's the Greeks. And that's also no success. There is no way for the Greeks to retreat. So and the Sennites also will not retreat. So we will fight this battle probably to the end. And this time the Sand Knights did a hit. The Greeks also did a hit. So the Sand Knights lose one. And the Greeks, they actually lose the area now. And now the Sand Knights will pillage the city. And that gives them three. victory points. In addition we will see a raid here and a raid is different from a standard attack. If you do a raid attack the attacker doesn't do any damage to the defender. The defender does the normal damage to the attacker. In addition there are no modifiers involved. So the, the minus two modifier for the city doesn't apply here. And if the attacker, there, there is only one round of combat. And if the attacker does a single hit, then the raid is successful. The city is flipped, it becomes a ruin, and um, the player usually gains four gold, the attacker, and in this case the Sand Knights can decide if they want to take four gold or if they want to um, take uh, the victory points. After that one round of combat if there are still surviving attackers, they have to retreat. So, the Sand Knights attack with four dice. Seven is good enough. And they manage to do a successful raid attack here. The Greeks fight back. And that sucks. Two hits. So the Sand Knight lose two troops. That's pretty painful. And they're going to retreat, and uh, hmm, I think they're both going to retreat into Zanium. They want to hold this area. The chances are better of holding the mountain area than to spread out and trying to hold both areas. I think. Okay, so the city is raided. And now at that point, the Greeks could rebuild the city right away by discarding a unit. And that would then give them back their city. I'm not sure if I want to do that because, well, as long as the Sand Knights are around, um, This is an expensive 
action because they can basically raid the city in the next turn again. Therefore, I don't know if I want to just deliver victory points to the Sand Knights by building up cities. Hard to tell. No, I don't think I want to do that. I'm going to leave this as a ruin. So that means the Sand Knights ended up with six victory points this turn, but they've lost three territory. Okay, they, they captured that one, but they lost two units and an important territory. Anyway, okay, now we see Carthage. And at the moment, Carthage is the most wealthiest country here. They control one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine areas and three cities. So they have an income of 11. That is definitely impressive. Okay, so I'm going to place that up here. And, uh, well, Um, now, for Carthage there's a special rule. If I buy reinforcements, I have to place them all in Africa. And if I buy a fleet, I have to place it adjacent to Africa. So, and actually adjacent to a country in Africa that I control. I'm pretty sure about that. So, let's see. Okay, they gain Mago, a leader in North Africa. Technically he should come after placing the reinforcements that we bought, but in this case that is not a, important at all. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to place him simply here. And no more special things at that point. Oops, shit. So we want no Greeks in North Africa. We want Sicily. We want to hold these islands up here. And also this area down here. That's what gives us point. But basically Sicily is the most important area for Carthage at that point. But it's not going to be easy to do an invasion here we have a pretty big force here with a leader and a city so that is very unlikely that we can capture Lilibeum. These areas are not that strong. We'll see about that. Okay, to be honest I'm not sure what to do with Carthage here. I see two ways. Basically one problem is Carthage has to defeat their and Africa against the Greeks. This is definitely a danger and they don't want to lose victory points here. I mean they would lose three victory points for each area controlled by the Greeks. If I'm not mistaken here. Now that's actually not true. They would lose three victory points if any Greek unit is located in Africa. So it's not that terrible. But it's definitely pretty bad. So, on the one hand, they want to play this a little bit um, more cautious, conservative. And the option to do that would be to improve the fleet and then try to destroy the Greek fleet. That is possible if we bring a leader onto the fleet because it gives every ship then in the same area a plus two modifier. So that would mean the fleet would be in a massive advantage 
if they had for example four units attacking the Greek fleet the Greeks need a nine to hit and uh, the Carthaginians would only need a seven to hit so they have a realistic chance to actually destroy both uh, the complete fleet of the Greeks and uh, that could be also a long-term advantage. On the other hand, that would allow the Greeks maybe then in the next turn to take whole Sicily and They would probably take some losses here, but if they control Sicily, this is definitely an advantage. So the other option Carthage has is an invasion here of Sicily. They could, for example, land in Misana and try to um, yeah, try to restore the balance territory-wise in Sicily here and I think um, I think I'm gonna roll a die here so I think I'm really gonna go 50-50 I don't really know what the better option is so the first five is a attack against the fleet and the second one is a an invasion of Sicily okay so we'll see the invasion and that means now that Carthage will um, build two more land units they got 11 bucks so they will pay 10 bucks to build an elephant and another um, infantry and uh, let's see they're gonna place the infantry here and the elephant here then they're gonna load these three units and they're gonna leave Mauritania alone to um, to give Africa Carthage a better defense and they're gonna bring them onto the ships and by the way I don't know if I mentioned that oh these are the Etruscans what are they doing in Africa shit I'm not even sure oh fuck I don't have any more now that sucks I don't have any other infantry units here so I can actually no, not buy a second infantry unit uh, that's a problem okay I think then great one two three four I got five left now and I don't know what to do with that I could buy another fleet <clears throat> or I could store the money for now I can save it <clears throat> yeah so I think I'm gonna save the money and shit that's not so cool <clears throat> well that actually changes the situation I messed this up completely. There are tons of Carthaginian units in here. I just looked in this space here. So, um, yeah, I can't buy another one, of course, without any problems. Okay, there we go. So, that means now, yeah, we can load up to two units into a single fleet. So, we're going to place these two guys in here. And I'm going to take Margo with another infantry here and then we want to land here Messana so 
we can move two spaces right there and by the way the units they can not move on land and on sea during the same turn they can embark and disembark and do an invasion that's possible but they cannot move after using sea movement okay and now we're gonna attack here in Misana so we have a plus two bonus for the leader which evens out with the city which is a minus two but we got the superiority here um, with the fleet so that gives us then a plus one overall and I'm really not sure if I want to take all three units with me. That might not even be necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. And the... Um, this guy has a plus two modifier during the first turn because of the invasion bonus. Okay. Now, the Greek unit, because there are two different types of units now attacking, the infantry and the elephant, the Greek guy has to decide which unit he actually wants to attack. So he um, tries to attack the elephant. And that's a miss. A terrible roll. And now the Carthaginians, they use, they have three units. The black one is the elephant, and the other two are the standard infantry. And uh, that should be a hit, and the elephant is also a hit. Okay, so that means the guys are killed. We take the area here, Misana, and uh, yeah, that's uh, then the end of the turn. Carthage might gain victory points for killing this guy, um, let me see, victory points. Yeah, they gain a, a point for killing the Greeks here. Okay. So next are the Illyrians. And they treat this area, that's a special rule for them. They can treat this just as a normal area, Illyricum. So, uh, they gain four bucks. And, uh, yeah, they're going to buy a unit. So, hmm, hard to tell where to place it. Maybe here in Venezia. What do they want to reach? Well, they also want to raid cities, which gives them quite a few victory points. But there is no city here in reach. There would be one here, but there is Ravenna in between. Pavia would be here, but also too many Celtic units here. Um, they want to control Ravenna and Verona. So yeah, Verona, that's actually something they want. And Ravenna. Both are heavily guarded. Hard to tell if we want to take that risk here, because <clears throat> I really don't know, actually. I think for now it might be a better idea to do not take that risk, earn a little money, and uh, strengthen my forces. Maybe the Celts will get trouble with the Etruscans or with the Romans and uh, then we can still during a later turn try and attack against these areas. But for now 
I got a feeling that we can only lose. I mean, in Ravenna there is Brennus, which is anyway crazy to attack there. We could try it here, but I don't really see much use in that. And then finally, it's the Romans at the end of the turn. And they gain two bucks for now. Why are they at two? Because that's the Greek, I guess. Okay, so they gain two bucks. And let's see. There's always something special with the Romans. So they get Sulpicius with six legions in Roma. And at the end of the Roman turn, they gain a free city. So, well, at the moment, it's possibly the best idea to play it easy and just grab these four areas here. That seems to make a lot of sense. But let's see where they want to go. Well, in turn three, they want Perusia, Picenum, Samnium and Corsica. Hmm. Okay, that means they actually want this area. This area. Shit. Zamnium is here and Corsica. So actually they're not too much interested in these areas here. Meh. That's not so cool. They would gain three points if they could kill Brennus. But this guy is pretty far away and they have to fight their way through there. <sighs> hmm. Well, hard to tell. Okay, so I'm not going to buy anything, but I will gain now uh, Sulpicius and six legions. And I think we might be able to do more than just one action with these guys then. Okay, so we have a pretty big force here now. And I think what I want to do is, first, I want to take these, well, let's call them free areas here. They're pretty cheap and yeah, it might be useful to take them. In addition, now we can start an attack maybe against some of these interesting areas here. So we need Perusia, Picenum, Samnium and Corsica. These are the real Apulia and Ravenna. Ravenna is here. Where is Apulia? Down here, okay. So this area is interesting and basically this area and the island here. Okay, so I suggest Hmm. Well, I got a fleet here. Question is, do I want to risk a battle against Corsica here? It's tempting, and once we have this, I think I really want to try that, actually. So, what I'm going to do is... I think I take the ship and two units. Eh. Hard to tell. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Sulpicius with his troops here to Perusia, try to take out that city. I'm going to take the Roman fleet move it here and try an invasion here in Corsica and uh, I leave two Ro uh, Roman units here in Rome for protection. So let's start with a battle here. Now this is a special unit because first of all it's a consular legion. So first of all it has uh, 
an amazing attack value, amazing attack value of five. It can uh, and second of all, it can take two hits during a battle. So that's uh, really really strong. It costs me six to build. Um, I cannot build. Um, I can only build these consular legions up to half the number of cities that Rome controls. If I have already that number, I'm not allowed to build any more uh, consular legions. If I lose cities, I don't have to remove the consular legions, that's okay, but I'm not allowed to build additional ones. So let's start with the battle here. The, the Carthage actually has a plus two modifier here and they're gonna try to uh, kill the Roman unit because it's uh, extremely hard to kill the legions. I got a plus um, one modifier because of the superiority here. That is an Etruscan unit, that doesn't count. And uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's see. We can uh, okay. So the black die is for the consular legion. The white die is for the and we got a minus one for a modifier because it's in a mountain. I see that now. So overall, we uh, the modifiers cancel each other out. And that was a very bad start. <laughs> and now we see the the Carthage player fighting back. And he also fucked up. Now he might consider retreating. I'm not at because now he doesn't have that plus two modifier anymore. Uh, I wonder if it's possible to retreat over a straight. I think it might be, but I have to check that. Well, honestly, I'm not sure. But uh, I'm simply going to allow it. I didn't find an answer in the rules. But uh, this is not such an important situation. So I think I'm going to allow it here. Okay. So the Romans now control Corsica. And then we do the battle here. So the leader cancels out the city penalty. So the Romans have a minus one penalty for the mountain area. The Romans have three legions. So they use these three dice. And the Etruscans have two dice for defense. Okay, so the Romans only need a six to hit. But uh, because of their minus one penalty, they only do one hit. The Etruscans do also one hit. Uh, well, now... I mean, it's kind of interesting. The Etruscans could try to fight to hold position here and fight back. It's a tough call, and uh, I think they actually want to. Yeah, why not? Um, yeah, I think they want to try to fight back. It's a tough one, but uh, still, if they're lucky, they might actually have a chance. Well, Okay, at least they managed to kill another Roman unit. So the Romans now took Perugia, but for a price. Still, I think that was a pretty good turn for the Romans. They managed to take all these regions here for or these regions for free, Corsica and Perugia. And now we can think about the battle here and well, the question is, are the Romans interested in fighting the Etruscans here? 
Hard to tell, I don't think they are that much. And the Etruscans are also not that interested in fighting the Romans because as long as they control that they have a fleet here, they have in these areas here a naval superiority against the Celts, which gives them an advantage. And the, that is actually the only fleet of the Romans. So maybe the Romans want to keep that for now and uh, yeah. Okay. So. And this is now the end of the... F no, it's not. The Romans receive a city and they're going to build a city here in Umbria. And then I don't think they gain any points for killing Etruscans or so. Uh, no. No, no, definitely not. But they, yeah, they would get a point, a half a point for killing Carthaginians, but the guy retreated, so no point for the Romans here. Now that's the end of turn one, and we're gonna count the points. So it wasn't too impressive during the first round, but that was also not to expect. The blue player only did one point with Carthage for killing a Greek unit. And the red player only made a point with the Greeks for killing a Carthaginian unit. The only uh, nation which gained some significant points were the Samnites for pillaging and raiding cities. They managed to gain six points. And this is now the end of turn one. So I'm going to see turn two. And uh, honestly, I think I'm going to load this up at that point. I, th I know it's a f uh, pretty short video, but it's a good point to load it up. And then uh, in the future, I'm hoping to do a single video for each turn.